All right, welcome back to the channel. So we are gonna go on into the rumor mill today. And the rumor is that Deontay Wilder went to the doctor and has reports that he has an injury to his jaw where he got hit by Tyson Fury that is consistent with being hit with an object and not a boxing glove, which could which could mean that Tyson Fury's gloves were loaded or that he hit him with maybe a knuckle. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. I know you Deontay Wilder haters are not gonna like this, but I have a grown accustomed to making reports and talking about things that are happening in boxing that some of y'all don't like. This is the ongoing, uh, the ongoing drama of cheating related accusations with Tyson Fury. This time it is, and I've got to tell you, I don't know where this, I don't know where this comes from. I don't know where it comes from. I, and I'm not saying that it's not true. I'm just saying that I don't know where the source is that this comes from. So, I'm telling you about a rumor that I heard, okay? Not something that I know is true or not true, but something that is being talked about and has come out. There's a video from Fred on Barbershop Conversations. He talks about it. Uh, Blue Blood Sports TV has it on his channel. I'm not sure because I haven't had enough other than to hear the basic description of it, where the actual source is. However, I think because of where it came from, you know, you would assume that it's something close to someone close to um, Deontay Wilder's camp that is letting this information out and leaking, you know, and leaking information. But let's talk about it. And I'm going to, before I tell you that why I think you have to talk about it, it's because if this was somebody that did not have a ramp, a, a cheat, a, did not have a history of cheating. And if the way that fight took off, didn't look super funny, then I might just let it slide and not say anything about it and not give you my thoughts on it. Uh, but this particular instance, this is somebody that, man, has been caught cheating a bunch of times. And this is a fight where the punch that caused that injury looked extremely, extremely funny. So what was said, uh, what was said? So my understanding it is, is that there is a doctor that, tight, that Deontay Wilder went to in order to treat his injuries. Now, if you recall, when Deontay Wilder was, Deontay Wilder was dropped with one shot. And it was a straight right hand. It was a straight right hand that landed um, right here on this part of his ear. And what you saw was immediately after that, you saw a swelling in like a strip that went across his ear. So what they're saying is that that particular part right there, that there was damage done that is not consistent, that is not consistent with the padded glove, either because of the because of the narrowness of how it was contacted or with the fact that it actually broke in that in that particular position. I'm not sure what the logic is, what the logic is. However, what they're saying is that that's not caused by a glove punch. That's caused by you getting a getting hit with something with a hard surface to it. So that is leading F that is if you connect that with what a lot of people observed during the fight and you can believe it or you cannot believe it. It does not make any difference whether or not you believe it. What I'm saying is that there are many people that do believe that the gloves, that the gloves of Tyson Fury looked as if they rolled back this way and exposed his bare knuckles, which are the knuckles that were a part of those laces. Now, you had a lot of people is a, obviously a big storm of people that say, hey, you know, that couldn't have happened. It's impossible for the glove to go this way. Then you have other people that say, no, it's not impossible that the glove can go that way. In fact, it's taught people are taught how to punch like that. And my take on it is I don't ever underestimate anybody's ability to cheat. OK, and so for people to tell me now, I'm not going to say that I know for certain what happened or didn't happen because I don't. 
But when I look at gloves flop looking like they're flopping around with balloons and I've been watching fight after fight after fight after fight since then and every fight that I've reviewed, whether like, for example, I've went and I've watched every fight in Terrence Crawford's career that is on it, that is that you're able to actually watch or get a copy of the fight. Right. I've watched all the fights that I've seen arrows for Errol Spence because I'm doing this particular project. I have yet to see a glove flop like that. I've been watching the Muhammad Ali fights that people say the glove was in an awkward position. His glove did not flop like that. It's something funny with Tyson Fury's gloves flopping like that because you don't see it anywhere else. And I'm not talking about still images where you can catch one here or there. I'm talking about live punches where you can see him punch and you can see that glove flopping around. Dude, it is just really, really funny. So, but if then you add to that, somebody, uh, uh, somebody saying, no, nah, that's blunt force trauma to this particular portion of your ear. And that's not consistent with being hit with a glove or it is consistent with being hit by a sharp object, being hit with an object. Then you have to say, OK, well, all right, you don't believe both. Like, no, I don't believe the glove flop and I don't believe the doctor when he says it's consistent with being hit with something that was, you know, with blunt force, like a, you know, the edge of your knuckle or you being hit with like, you remember them Slim Jims, not a Slim Jims, Slapjack, like his ear looked like he got hit with a Slapjack. A Slapjack is a piece of leather with a little piece of metal, metal in there that slaps around, pop, you can knock the tire to somebody with a Slapjack. So if you got an injury that looks like it was caught, uh, caused by a slapjack, but you're punching with a with a with you're punching with a gloved hand. That injury should not occur. So it just draws more question. Now this is this is where I am on it. I don't know about either one of them. I don't know. I don't know. I think I saw. A, I'm pretty sure I saw a knuckle. Pretty sure I saw a knuckle in that dude's glove. I know that I saw Tyson Fury drop Deontay Wilder with a shot. They were Deon I have no clue where Deontay, where Tyson Fury got that power from. Because Tyson Fury has landed straight rights on a bunch of people and they never drop nobody like that. But all of a sudden, right when he needs it, he sits down on a shot and it with he sits down on a shot that and immediately knocks a dude down with one shot, even though he's not that powerful a puncher. And then he gets a fracture on his ear, inside of his ear that is not consistent with being hit by a glove. It's consistent with you being hit with something like a slapjack. And that's my, I'm putting my words into it in that particular incident. Then I'm thinking, hey man, something, something is really, really funny. But here's the thing. This is the most important thing about this to me. If this was a scenario where somebody was saying it about somebody that did not already have a rich tradition, a, a, a rich history of cheating, then maybe you could just be like, ah, just whatever, throw it under the rug because you don't have anything else to base it on, right? But say, for example, you have Antonio Margarito and Antonio Margarito, all of a sudden, you know, he comes out of retirement and he's knocking guys out. Right. He's hitting guys and guys are starting to get dents in the side of their head, you know, stuff like that. And all of a sudden, you know, his power is returned. You know that he tested pot that not he didn't test positive, but that he had, um, you know, plaster of Paris in his gloves in one fight. And now and then after he got rid of the plaster of Paris, he ain't knocking anybody out. But now all of a sudden he's back into knocking people out again. If somebody says, I think the guy might have plaster of Paris in his glove. It's not unreasonable to think that he might because he had a history of doing that before. Just like with Dillian White, when Dillian White tested positive for Diana Ball, nobody is surprised that he tested positive for Diana Ball. Nobody. Why? Because he had tested positive for it before. If 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 when when Alexander Povetkin tests positive for Deontay Wilder fight, nobody was doubting whether or not he would have tested positive. Why? Because he had tested positive before. Once you have a history of doing things, it is reasonable for people to suspect that you can do it again, especially when things look funny in the ring and you're fighting. So Tyson Fury tested positive for Na uh, Nandrolone in a, in a fight. Uh, leading up to or after, I think tested positive after the Christian Hamer fight and before uh, for a test that happened after the Christian Hamer fight and before the Vladimir Klitschko fight. Tested positive for it. So that's one instance of him cheating. Another instance of him cheating is when he went into the when he went into a boxing ring with his with and somebody had cut 
to cut the cord but that connected his thumb to his hand and the referee forced him to change gloves for walking in what is loaded gloves. So he's tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. He has been caught walking into the ring with loaded gloves or altered gloves, however you want to say it. But that's altering your gloves is loaded gloves up affected gloves right now. I'm not going to say loaded gloves. Now, loaded gloves is when you put the stuff on your hand. So altered gloves. Right. And then he has a fight with he had a fight with um, Cunningham. Steve Cunningham, which the referee, Steve Cotton, said after which Steve Cotton said that Tyson Fury is the dirtiest fighter that he's ever seen in his career in his 30 years of covering matches. By the way, R.I.P. Eddie Cotton. He he passed away maybe about two weeks ago. So rest in peace, Eddie Cotton. And uh, my condolences to your family. Uh, but he called Tyson Fury the dirtiest fighter he's ever seen. <laughs> Energy went out in the middle of the video. But like I said, if Tyson Fury had not already had this track record and for doing things very similar to this, then maybe I wouldn't be so quick to believe that there's a significant chance that that was the case. But I do because the glove looks funny. The fact that he had that much power in that one particular shot, dude, I mean, just it just looks real funny, man. It'd be interesting, though, to see whether or not like I'd be interested to hear what the doctor had to say. Um, but anyway, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, we'll see in the rematch what takes place. But I certainly hope I hope that this is not true about about Tyson Fury. But like I said, Tyson Fury's rec uh, uh, track record is not on his side as a consequence of that. Hey, man, you I give it credence because of because of what I saw and because of his past history. So anyway, you let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.